Okay, yeah. So uh, welcome everyone to this week's Hacker Tools where we'll cover Vim in general. So if you ever if you need the slides, uh, first of all, uh, it's on the screen here. So just go to this link and can get out the slides for today. Yeah, so a bit about what we're going to do. Wait, just give me a second. Okay, yes. So a bit about us. Uh, we are basically NUS hackers. And so basically uh, our club is uh, our student interest group kind of revolves around trying to spread hacker culture in the community and in NUS. So we usually run uh, this suite of events. So hacker school is sort of like what we're doing today, a series of workshops. We kind of cover uh, uh, technologies where you can use to uh, kind of do your own projects. Uh, Friday Hacks is this weekly speaking series where we invite speakers from the industry to kind of just talk about something they think is interesting. Hack and Roll is our NO hackathon, where it's basically it's a hackathon without a problem statement. I encourage everyone to kind of just build something they think is cool. right? And well, last but not least, is kind of Hacker Tools, which is what we are doing today, where we'll go through um, basically like power tools for people who want to optimize their workflow. Right, so a bit about myself, uh, I'm Chunyu, um, a year two computer science undergrad. You can check out my GitHub there, and that's just a bit about me, right? So for today, uh, we will be going through Vim. So uh, everyone kind of uh, needs to have Vim installed. If you don't, you can kind of quickly just grab an executable online. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can kind of use GVim as well. Yeah, so uh, that's basically just the prerequisites. So Everyone okay? If everyone's okay, I'll just continue on. Everyone here has Vim. Anyone needs like a quick two minutes to quickly install Vim. All right, cool. Right, so basically, uh, let's start with basically why you want to learn an editor, right? So uh, we don't have workshops on like how to use a web browser or something like that, right? So because most of it is quite intuitive. So why is an editor like different? So like, uh, if you realize you spend a lot of time writing a lot of code, editing a lot of files on your computer, and basically uh, learning an editor that can match the speed at which you think is very important. And that's sort of the idea of why you want to invest time in learning an editor. It doesn't have to be Vim. It can be any editor that can kind of match your speed of thinking, right? So as long as it helps to speed up your workflow, that's kind of the idea here, right? So when you want to kind of start learning an editor, there are a few few steps, right? First of all, it's kind of, you want to learn the fundamentals, which is kind of what we are covering today. So we'll cover like the fundamentals of how to use Vim. But beyond that, you kind of need to keep practicing as much as possible when you're doing your own uh, coding or like editing your own files and stuff like that. And within about like 10 to 20 hours of use, you should be back to your normal speed. And beyond that, you start to see some of like improvements in your efficiency and your speed, basically. And that's kind of the idea of use, uh, trying to invest time in learning an editor, right? So yeah, so today we'll be coming, like covering Vim. The idea is to give you, the idea is that we kind of kickstart your knowledge, give you some basic fundamentals and resources and point, at you, point, point you towards uh, certain resources for you to kind of learn on your own time, right? So uh, if you ask anyone who's like very invested in learning an event, uh, editor, there's this very big, uh, uh, question like which editor do you learn right so there's a whole wikipedia article on this basically it's like oh the two big ones are like vim and emacs so which one do you learn what's better like everyone kind of says their own editor is better and stuff like that but basically it's just completely up to you uh learn whatever you think interests you most and like can suit your workflow most right so today we'll be just covering vim but you can also take a look at emacs if you want right so basically uh some art um history lesson on vim because vim stands for vi imitation or it was later changed after, um, in a few years, after a few years to VI Improve. So it was created by this guy named uh, Brem Molina. And it was based off a different editor called VI, which was created in, by Bill Joy in 1976. And it's important because we kind of, because of how old it is, uh, a certain design philosophy was based off uh, certain limitations back then, right? So basically, Bill Joy, the creator of VI, was kind of trying to create an editor that was usable at a very, very slow uh, internet uh, internet speed back then, right? So essentially, you could only really uh, think of an editor where you can only type uh, one letter a second. So that doesn't seem very efficient, right? And so basically, a lot of uh, the VI commands were basically trying to optimize the the text editor to use the number of keystrokes as 
as much as possible so it's usable with a very very slow internet connection but it turns out when you optimize for a very very little number of keystrokes it, you have a very very efficient editor even today right so today uh vim is kind of the default editor in any unix based operating system it'll be very very hard to kind of find a operating system unix based operating system without vi or vim or any of one is like variants right so vim um the difference between VI and Vim is that Vim is extremely uh, extendable and a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, customizability and a lot of plugin support for Vim, right? So if you want to kind of write LaTeX in Vim or like uh, write Python in Vim, there's a lot of plugins to kind of support that. Yeah, so the idea behind Vim is that it's a modal text editor. And so the idea behind a modal text editor is that you have different modes for doing different tasks in Vim, right? And so uh, the decision behind this was kind of because uh, people, like, you kind of realize you spend more time, like if you're reading like, a big chunk of code or like, a big file, right? You spend more time navigating through the file than you do like kind of writing like a whole book at, all at once, right? So that's why we kind of have different modes. Uh, there are four main modes in Vim. Basically, normal mode is kind of your default mode where you're used to kind of navigate throughout the code. And then insert mode is where you start it's kind of like what you're familiar with in your normal uh, code ed uh, editors or like uh, VS Code, etc. Like you just you hit a key and uh, and the um, keystroke kind of appears in the screen, right? So visual mode is what you use to kind of uh, select blocks of text and do certain things with them. And then command mode is sort of uh, a way for you to enter commands to interact with it. So uh, I've been going a bit fast. Anyone got any questions so far? All good. Uh, Zoom. Uh, I think it's one in chat. No one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, in different modes of Vim, uh, different keystrokes will have very, very different meanings, right? So an example is if you press X while you're in insert mode, it will just display the letter X. So I can just show you here. Right. So currently, you see there's an insert on the bottom left screen. If I just hit X. Notice that it will just display an X on my screen, right? But if I am in, in normal mode, as so if this is a default mode, normal mode, if I hit X, it does nothing. But in reality, let's say I have a bunch of text here. If I hit X, it will just delete the, the D in this cursor selection here. So X, 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 X. All right, okay, let me just, let me can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the first thing to kind of learn is kind of how to oops, how to open and quit Vim, right? So there's a very common joke in where everyone's like starting out with like learning Vim. It's basically like if you kind of get a web designer, put him in a room, put him on a computer with Vim in front and ask him to quit Vim, essentially you have a very, very strong random string generator. Because uh, if you notice when you first start out Vim, no matter what you press here, it kind of doesn't display anything. Right, you try and type gibberish, nothing happens. So you kind of get a random string generator if someone doesn't know how to use Vim. Right, so basically, it's quite simple. Uh, to open Vim, you can just kind of type, uh, if you have a terminal, just type Vim. And you'll open this very, very basic text editor with an empty file. If you're using GVim, you can just open the executable and it should do the same thing. And to exit, you just type uh, colon Q. And you can see at the bottom of the screen there, it's quite small actually. Yeah, so you see the bottom of the screen when I uh, type colon, it opens like a text bar. And then I can kind of type a uh, Q and it kind of quits the for me, right? Is this big enough for you, by the way? Everyone here can see? Or is it too small? It's not. Right. Okay, yes. So by default in Vim, you kind of start, you can start with a, in the normal mode, right? And so for most cases, uh, normal mode is kind of your default mode that you will spend most of your time in. So usually how you transition between modes, you start from normal mode, you go to a different mode. Let's say I go to insert mode. I do some things. Then after that, once I'm done, I'll go back to normal mode. And let's say I'll do something out there, transition out of normal mode. So you'll go back and forth uh, from comma, uh, normal mode to different, different modes, right? So uh, for example, what we learned just now is kind of changing to command mode, right? So command mode happens when you press a uh, colon and you see this text bar up here at the very bottom of the screen. And you can kind of type different commands here, right? So uh, some of the 
most basic commands. W will kind of save the file. Uh, Q will quit. W, Q will save and quit. And then uh, exclamation mark is kind of force in action, right? So uh, let's say uh, I try and insert a bunch of text here. Then I try and quit the file. I'll get an error saying that uh, I can't quit the file because I haven't saved. But if I, let's say I don't want the changes and do Q exclamation mark. And that kind of quits without saving. And that force quit it, right? So that's basically how to go from normal to uh, command mode. So uh, any mode to command mode, you can kind of just hit escape. So if you're in, let's say, insert mode, you insert a bunch of text, and then you go, you want to go back to uh, command mode, just uh, normal mode, you just go back hitting escape, right? And so you'll use this key a lot because uh, you tend to spend most time going back to command mode and navigating the code base or like your text files in command mode, uh, normal mode. Right, so uh, escape might seem quite uh, counterintuitive because if the keyboard is on the top left and you kind of have to like stretch your finger out to hit escape. So uh, this is kind of like a historical reason is that basically if you look at the keyboard it was, VM was kind of built for, you can notice that the escape key is kind of here where your current tab key is. And so uh, back then it was a intuitive design choice because it's much easier to hit your tab key with your ring finger, right? So uh, some people like to map uh, their caps lock to escape to make this, to emulate some of this uh, functionality so it's easier to hit. There are other uh, ways to kind of do uh, hit escape. Basically, if you want, some people map like JJ or KK uh, to escape. We'll show you why later. But yeah, so there are many different ways to kind of get around that inconvenience. So basically, there are these four different modes and these are kind of how to uh, get around these modes. Uh, it might seem like just a bunch of random letters, but basically how you can uh, remember it is that each letter kind of is associated to a certain verb, right? So for example, right, so I, do a, I type a bunch of text, go escape, right? And then let's say I want to, so see my cursor now is hovering around that D. So if I want to insert something, I'll press I, oops, oh dear. Yeah, so I'll hit I, and then it will put me before where my cursor was, right? If I want to, let's say, insert something after the cursor, I'll hit A, a for a pen, and then it'll put me after the word I was highlighting, I can kind of insert, insert some text here, right? So that kind of makes sense why it's I and A. So capital I will insert at the start of the line, so it'll bring me to the start of the line. I kind of edit text here. Uh, capital A will do the opposite. It will bring me to the end of the line. I kind of edit, edit text here, right? Um, basically, uh, what O and capital O do is O it just start outputs on the next line. So it, it'll start. Uh, it automatically hit open a new line and then put me in insert mode, right? And then uh, capital O does the opposite. It puts a line above where I am highlighting and then puts me in the insert mode here, right? So that's kind of the basic of uh, moving between different modes. If you want to do visual mode, you can do V and kind of just highlights like your standard uh, highlighting in normal text editors, but there's also shift V, which is kind of, uh, it highlights the entire line. Uh, control V highlights a block of text. So it just like highlight this small block of text, for example, right? You'll see what you can do with that a bit later, right? So, but that's basically moving between uh, the different modes. And of course, uh, once you're done with everything, your base key is kind of just hit escape to go back. And basically, uh, if you're ever stuck in anything in Vim, or like you're not sure what's happening, you just hit escape and then it'll just bring you to normal mode where you can kind of work around everything. Yeah. Oops. Okay, just right. Yeah, so um, basically we're gonna go through some uh, very basic commands. Uh, let me just I'll open a file. Basically, I'll open any file, but I'm just going to have a file here, basically a uh, bunch of text here. So basically, when you're navigating a file, you just want to use a HJKL to move up, left, down, up, and right, respectively. Uh, why? Uh, once again, it's like a historic reason, because if you look at the kind of keyboard it's built for, there was no arrow keys back then. There were no mouse back then. So you kind of can see the, you can even see the arrow keys here, left, down, up, right. 
So it was kind of built for something like this. But it also, like people kept it because um, it turns out when you have your hand just lying on the alphanumeric characters, it makes it very efficient, right? Because you don't need to move your right hand down to the arrow keys to move, navigate around text. You don't need to move your hand to your mouse and then move your hand back to kind of edit text. So everything can be done basically with your alphanumeric keys in this way. So if you open any blog of text in your file, in your computer right now, you can kind of try and navigate around uh, Vim using Vim. So basically H J K L. Okay. So aside from that, there are different ways you can kind of uh, move around Vim. So uh, I'll just go through a few of them. So W kind of goes you, takes you to the start of the next word. So if you notice, so it takes me to the next word. Uh, B does the same thing, but backwards. So back one word, right? And then E is kind of uh, end of the word. So E will take me to the end of the word. I hit E again, it takes me to the end of the next word, so and so forth. If I want to go to the top of the file, I'll hit GG. It will bring me to the very, very top of the file. So this is good for editing files with very, very long lines of uh, code or text, right? So like if it's 800 lines, I'll go all the way to the end, I hit GG. Or if I want to go to the bottom, I hit G. So this takes me down to the very end, right? Uh, if you want to, let's say, hear this text that is a mix of white space characters and then like the start of the sentence, stuff like that, right? So zero kind of brings you to the start, very start of the line. Dollar sign brings you to the very end of the line. And then uh, carrot brings you to the first white space of that line. So you kind of use it to navigate around uh, whole lines. Uh, let's say you want to move to a certain line of code. If you're like writing code and then they say, oh, there's an error at line 34 or something. So you can go to just hit 34G and it'll basically bring you to line 34, right? Uh, if you want to edit certain parts, if you look at this like page, right? There's certain part at the top of the screen. I can do H for the higher portion of the, M for the middle of the screen and then L for the lower portion of the screen. You see, it brings my cursor to different parts of the screen here. Which is capital H, capital M, and capital L. Right. Right. So aside from that, let's say uh, I have certain a bunch of text here, right? And I want to see, let's say if I have a very long nested code, I want to see where this bracket takes me. I can hit basically you see my my cursor is now at this uh the start of the bracket. If I hit percent, it'll bring me to the corresponding braces at the end, right? So you can kind of use this to kind of check like very deeply nested code, like which bracket uh, it belongs in. So like, let's say I have a bunch of brackets. I don't know where this bracket ends. I just hit percent. And you see, it's even, even highlighted. Yeah. Uh, there's another function in Vim where you can kind of uh, repeat a number of times. So it doesn't make sense that Let's say I want to go down a couple of lines, but I don't know how much. I'll just hit, keep, keep hitting J. That, that, that will take a very long time. So another way you can do it is that of you enter a number before you want to enter a command. Let's say I want to do it 10 times. You can see uh, at the bottom of your screen, you should see the number 10 pop up. And then you hit the command you want to do. Let's say I want to go down 10 times, right? I hit 10 J. Right? So if I want to go up 20, 20 lines, I go 20 K. You can see I go up 20 lines. Right. And then last but not least, you want to scroll up and down. It's just control D to scroll down, control U to scroll up. Yeah, so uh give it a shot. Uh try running any text file if in the uh, in your um uh computer. If you want like this specific text file, you can try it around. Uh I think oh, if you install Vim, you can just type Vim tutor and kind of get this file to navigate around. Right. Uh, any questions so far? Oh, I think there's some in the Zoom chat. VI did not have a visual mode. I'm not sure actually. Yeah, you can use Control F and Control B as well, I think. Uh, everyone here okay? 
if you want, you can kind of use the slides as like a cheat sheet when you navigate your file. All good. Uh, so many one. Got any questions? Yeah, so if you're getting started learning Vim, this might be a bit overwhelming to learn and memorize all these commands at like instantly. So what I would recommend you if you're just starting out learning is to kind of just learn like the first like three types, like moving around using um, the arrow keys, your W, B, E, and then uh, top of our and of our. And then you can kind of do a lot of things with just like the very, very basic commands and then slowly, slowly learn the rest as you go. Oh, that's fast. Okay. Yeah. So aside from uh, the basic movement keys, there is also a uh, searching in Vim. So there's two kind of like searching, which is like, first one is kind of like inline searching. So like you want to search for a certain character in this line. Let's say I want to go to the command, uh, comma. I'll just do F and then the key I want to search, right? So F for find and then type comma. And see, it brings my cursor to the comma, right? And let's say I try and do F comma again. It just does nothing. If there's no instance of that in the line, it kind of just stops there, right? If I want to search, uh, so basically what it does is search forward from my cursor. If I want to search backward from my cursor, I'll do capital F. Let's say I want to search capital V. So it brings me to the start of the line where I have capital V, right? If I want to search beyond one line, I can use slash. And slash kind of puts you in command mode. I can see it appears at the bottom. And then I can type, uh, let's say I want to search command. You see, it basically brings me brings my cursor to the next instance of command if you hit enter and how do i move around through this uh command basically if i hit n you'll bring me the next instance n n n if i hit shift n you'll bring me the previous uh search result right and you, so this one uh this command kind of search forward in the in the file if you want to search backwards in the file you use question mark which kind of does the same thing right but instead now if i search command I hit and it goes backward in the file. But if I search, hit shift and it goes forward in the file. So it kind of just swaps the direction in which you're searching. Okay. Yeah, so you can use this to quickly navigate to a certain part of the file you want to look at or like edit, right? So now we go into like actually changing stuff in the file, right? So the first way you kind of change it is kind of we went through going to insert mode, right? Uh, so before we do that, anyone got any questions? Oh, I see some in the chat. Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, so basically if you want to insert something at where your cursor is relative to your cursor, I will insert, if I want to insert something before my cursor, I'll press I and then it'll insert before my cursor. If I want to insert, uh, insert something after my cursor, I'll hit A. And you put me after my, my cursor, where my cursor is hiding, right? And then O and capital O kind of just insert a new line below and above. Okay. And so once you're done editing your text, you'll just hit escape and then you'll go into your normal mode. Any questions so far? All can quickly understand the basic functionality of him. Okay, yes. So uh, something in Vim that's very different is that in normal mode, you can kind of edit small parts of the text using uh, certain modifiers, right? So for example, let's say uh, there's a typo in, uh, let's say in this line, and I want to quickly delete, uh, delete a portion of text, right? So you can kind of um, use press D, for the keystroke D for delete, and then it kind of accepts a second modifier and depending on the modifier, it will delete a certain portion of text, right? So the most common is kind of, uh, let me see, DW, which just means delete word. It's the verb, it's like basically the keystroke just means delete, delete word, right? So uh, you can kind of change this together with the numbers. 
So let's say I want to delete six words, right? I'll do six delete word and delete six words on the line, right? Uh, if I want to delete the whole line, I can just do dd and the six dd delete six, six lines. Yes, it does, I believe, yeah. So yeah, uh, my, my Vim here is line wrapping, so it doesn't look like six lines, but yeah, it is six lines, I believe. Right, and let's say, if you remember your previous commands, uh, zero, start of line, uh, dollar, end of line, if I do, uh, for example, if I do D dollar sign, basically dollar sign means end of line, right? So you just delete to the end of line from where my cursor is, right? Uh, another thing you can do is sort of uh, delete Q, which is uh, DT is the command for it. So you can see uh, delete Q, let's say I want to delete Q my comma. Okay, basically, it deletes everything from where my cursor is to the character I'm searching to for. So that's kind of a way you can chain stuff together. Right. So you can just try it out now on any like piece of text you have lying around your computer. Just uh don't know that you want to save yet. Yeah. yeah. Mm, another thing you can do, which is missing here, is that let's say I have uh quotations, right? Uh right, I want to let's say this is a very light, long line of quotes. And I want to change uh the quotes. I think this is wrong. I can also do uh delete inside. Uh, quotation marks. So D, I, and then quotation. And you kind of delete everything inside the quotation. You can do this for brackets, curly brackets, uh, square braces, etc, etc. Right. So that's how you kind of quickly delete something in normal mode without having to go into like uh, insert mode and then I just delete everything by hand because that's kind of counterintuitive. Right. Uh, similarly, kind of similar to what delete does, change kind of deletes the text, but it also does the extra step of putting you in insert mode, right? So let's say I want to change uh, a certain word. I can do change word CW, and you basically delete the first word and then put me in insert mode. So like if I want to change, uh, I'll say Emacs is a powerful editor. There's many commands. So then after I hit escape and then my stuff has changed, right? So uh, similarly, it takes in uh, the keystroke C, and then after that, you can have to add a modifier so it knows which how much of the text to change. If I do uh, 7CW, it just change several words, and then it'll delete some words and put me in circle. And I can edit the text here, right? If I want to, let's say, change the whole line, I do C dollar sign, and it'll delete everything, until the end of the line and put me in edit mode. Right. Similarly, uh, so you notice uh, all of the modifiers are kind of similar to what delete is. There's also change until, which is just uh, what about change to full stop. And basically you just delete everything until full stop and then put me in insert mode before the full stop. Right. So that's how you can quickly, quickly uh, very quickly edit certain sentences, phrases, or words in your code or text or anything you're editing. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Zoom, anyone? Like, no questions? If not, moving on. Yeah. So the last kind of small thing you can do in normal world is kind of yanking. So this is kind of the equivalent of like copy pasting in other editors. And so you can do this much more effectively in Zim. So basically it's a similar uh, concept to what D and C do in normal mode. So instead, uh, I kind of have Y for yank, and then I add a modifier after that, right? So if I do YW basically means yang word. And then to paste, I will just do P or put. So P, right? Right. So let's say I want to yang an entire line. I'll do YY. And then now if I press P, it pastes the line underneath. If I want to paste the line above, I'll do capital P. 
right? So uh, similarly, you can do like under Yang six words, there will be six Y W. And then if I paste it, you know, this this is six words here. So on and so forth, right? So you can kind of experiment with these commands. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like copy and pasting with them. Similarly, uh, if you have like a long big bracket with a lot of content here, I can also do like yank in brackets. And then now you can kind of see, I can yank the text in brackets, right? So the command for like yanking in certain things should be yi. And then if you're doing brackets, you do the start of the bracket. If you're doing quotations, you do quotations, All right? And so that kind of puts it in like a paste buffer. And then when you press P, you'll just paste it. Right. So under like miscellaneous stuff, you've probably looked at my keystrokes, you see I've done some of this a couple of times. So to quickly undo an action is to just hit U, U for undo, quite simple. If you want to redo, it's Control R, which is kind of redo, right? Uh, there's some special ones. So X, as we went through earlier, was kind of just to delete a single character. You can change this with numbers. So let's say I do 10 X, you'll delete 10 characters. Right. Uh, if I press a dot, it will do the last action. So what does that mean? So let's say I'll do DD, which just deletes a line, right? Now I move to another line. And if I hit dot, it deletes that line as well. Basically, it will redo the action that I just did, but on a different line. So if I did a very, very complex uh, operation, I can just hit dot to we replicate the action I just did, right? Uh, so other things, uh, let's say I want to replace a character. So I'll do R and then the character I want to replace. So this is useful if you only need to fix very, very small typos in your text, right? And you don't want to like have to go into insert mode, then delete it, then change it. Instead, you just do it in a, like two keystrokes, R, P, or R, L, or whatever you want to change it to. Okay, so those are kind of the miscellaneous keystrokes you can do to kind of make very, very quick edits. But I think the most useful one here will be your dot, right? So you kind of redo certain actions and some actions are very, very long and take a very long time that you can just press dot and you quickly optimize your workflow. Okay, so that's kind of the main thing. I want to show line numbers and how many lines you should yank. Uh, there is a way to set numbers, yes. So you can open command mode. We'll show you how to like modify your Vim configs slightly later on. But basically, uh, the way Vim is set up by default is that there are no line numbers. You can kind of modify uh, something called a Vim RC to kind of set line numbers, or you can just do command set numbers. I believe this should work, yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so you cannot set numbers yet, right? So yes, yes. Yeah. Mm, to make it persistent, you can kind of realize, yeah. So uh to yank and paste elsewhere outside of Vim, there's also a setting inside uh Vim uh Vim RC you can kind of set to make sure that your paste buffers are the same inside of them and up to other applications. I'm not sure if I have, I have that in my VMRC, but I can show everyone later, yeah. Hmm. So basically, uh, just a very, very quick practice. Uh, everyone can just go to this link here. Basically, you open a text file, and this text file has a bunch of typos. So try and fix it using uh, basically all the commands and keystrokes we show you like above. You can refer to the slides you need to, but yeah, uh, let me just quickly show you the file. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, go to this link. It should open up to uh, show you a text file. And then you can kind of try and edit it here, right? So, it's good. Flashing. Okay. 
Why is it flashing? Very interesting. So just do. Yeah, so basically, you can try and copy this paste this text over and see if it, you can try and fix it using uh, the hot piece given above. And if you have any questions, just type in chat. Try and fix my issue in the meantime. Uh, we we'll take like three minutes to do it. If anyone got any questions, feel free to type in the chat. Or anyone here got any questions, feel free to sound up. Okay, everyone in Zoom, okay, able to do it. Okay, uh, just let me go through. Yeah, so basically, if you look through this, is it gonna keep flashing like that? Okay, yes. No, okay. Wait. Uh, let me quickly fix some errors on my side. Okay, yes, maybe it's better. Uh, no, flashing. Okay. okay, yeah, so if it doesn't flash, I think that's good. Okay, so basically, uh, let's say you want to go to a certain uh, part of the file, you can kind of just get, uh, let's say, W to go there. Or we can just go to, let's say, I want to go to the D, I can do, uh, do F and then G, and then you'll bring me to the G that I want to go. Then I can just hit X to kind of delete under my cursor. Oh, that is very annoying. And X under go under my cursor. Uh, okay. Give me a second. Let me solve that problem real quick. Uh, Okay, make that work. Uh, share my screen. Okay, yeah, so moving on. Uh, over here we have like a duplicate line. So the way to fix that is to just delete the whole line. You just kind of delete by pressing DD. And it delete the whole line, right? Uh, 
for example, there are oops, how does one use GG for beginning of file? To go beginning of file, you can just hit GG, so not BG. So GG goes to the front of file, if G goes to the end of the file, you can see my cursor, even though it's a bit small. Right. So uh if you want to go to like a certain part to fix a small error, so over here we have like slow is spelled wrongly. You can kind of see how many words we have to go to. You see the start of word. You just go uh let's say seven W. We're almost there. And we kind of reach where the the D is, you can do R and then S to replace the D with an S. Cannot see yeah, my cursor's a bit tiny. That's just a Windows thing. I don't think that's a way to change it. So yeah. And the background's a bit annoying. Sorry? Insert. Uh, nope, that doesn't work. Yes, I don't remember what it's trying to work for. And the background being weird is a very unique Windows part which I've never seen before. Drop plus. Is this big enough? Uh, it's very tiny, like above the, yeah, you can kind of see it. Every time I move it, it kind of screws around with the blur. I don't think so. Like, if I don't have a program behind it, if I like, it's still weird. I think the blur is not working with an arrow. I don't know. So I think it's a Windows bug. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try and move okay, it. And then we have, I'll do it this way. Yeah. That we kind of kind of avoid the error, right? Okay, so everyone got each mode to kind of follow this so far. Anyone got any questions? Zoom, oh, good. okay, so moving on. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Yeah, so there are kind of different ways of selecting text. We've kind of gone through at a very basic level how it works, but basically. Uh, v allows you to kind of, well, that's uh, very annoying, but V kind of allow, allow you to select text like a normal text editor, so it kind of just highlights, right? Uh, Shift V will select the whole line, and then as you go down, you'll select the next line, so on and so forth. Control V selects a block of text. What's a block of text? Basically, uh, it'll be like a giant square when you're highlighting, so... Uh, so look at my cursor at the start of the very first out of the file. You can kind of see it here. It covers the whole thing. Okay, I think a better way to do this is I'll use my okay, yes, this is a lot easier to see. So if you use control V, you cannot see what is going on. Okay, let me it's being very wonky here. Yeah, okay, so this is better. So you kind of see it selects a certain block of text. This is a bit hard to see because it kind of wraps the text around, but basically it kind of selects a big block of text for visual block, right? So uh, what you can do with this selection of text is that you can kind of uh, do the simple commands like require that requires modifiers. So like, for example, if I want to highlight something and I want to delete it, I'll just press D, it'll delete my selection, right? If I want to yank, for example, I'll just like, let's say I want to uh, yank something, you can see kind of what mode I'm in at the bottom of the screen, where it kind of is visual. Then I want to yank it, I'll just press Y and I just hit P to kind of just paste it. And then this works for Control V, V, Shift V, right? And if I want to change a certain uh, part of the text, I'll just do V, I'll highlight it, 
or like, uh, then I just hit C and it'll delete everything and put me into the mode. And that's where you can kind of insert stuff like that. All right. Uh, some questions in chat. Sorry for all that. Okay, any issue so far? Okay, yeah. So uh Aside from saving and creating files, you can kind of try and open different files. For example, if I want to open a completely new file, oh, what happened to my voice? Hmm. Yeah, if I want to open a new file, I can just do e new, and then opens a new file without uh, a name. So it's just kind of at the top, it says no name, right? If I want to open a certain file, uh, I can press E and then this takes relative path. So you're currently in the folder with a certain file you want to open, just E space the uh, file you want to open. <coughs> right. Another way to do it is in terminal. If you want to open it in terminal, you just type vim or type it or type vim. And then the file you want to type based on where you are in the file. So like I want to do nvim, vim.pack for example. It opens for me right and i can do my normal navigating around here right if i want to open split so what are split? splits are basically uh certain ways you can open a separate screen to kind of view how the file looks so let me just quickly let me go for the screen okay right so let's say this is a very, very big file right and i want to do a split so i'll just do b split or you can just shorten it to VSP, I believe. And basically, you'll just create a new vertical split of the same file. Why, why is it useful? Let's say I have a very, very long file like this, and I want to edit the bottom of the file, but I want to take reference to the top of the file. So I'll just do Shift G here. So the right side, it, you can see it changes to the bottom of the file, but I have reference to the top of the file here, right? So I can see, for example, if I'm writing uh, slides, for example, I can kind of see, uh, oh, maybe I forgot a package here, right? I want to add a package here. And then continue writing anything at the bottom of the file, right? To move between splits, it will be, by default, it's control, um, control H. It was the default. I can't remember the default way to move splits. Uh, control something and then HJKL to move, move around splits. And this is control H. Yeah, wait, I need to yeah. Yeah, I have because basically I don't use the default ones, right? But you can do uh vertical splits and then you can do normal splits, which is just split or SPL. Right. And now you see it splits into another horizontal split on my right side. And you can just every time you press a uh, colon quit, it just kind of deletes that split. Ah, oh, control W, yes, that's the one. So split right so control w then if i go above i'll just do k control w okay stuff like that thank you for that yeah control w yes that's the one okay so yeah okay yeah, so, so, yeah. so I think there's a exercise here. Wait. For example, okay, yes. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll do this together with the practices, so maybe it'll make more sense. Right, so basically, there's this uh, thing in. Okay, let me put this aside. So there's this thing uh, called macros you can do in Vim, which is very, very powerful. And it's kind of how you can speed up most of your workflows. And so macros kind of allow you to record an action and then replay that action, right? So to give an example, let's say I have a list of emails here, for example, and I want to extract the names out using a macro, right? So uh, I'll kind of enact how I would do this with uh, a single line and then how you can use record a macro for it and then repeat it over and over again, right? For example, for like 
uh, this email here, you notice the names are kind of split with this dot here. So let's say if I want to extract the names out, I will do uh, find dot and replace R, then space. Right, then I'll go to the add, find add, and then I'll delete to the end. So D dollar sign. Right. And now hit F right? And then that, that's how you do it for a single line. Okay. Okay. So let's say I want to do it for every single line. Right? How do I do it? So I'll do something called recording a macro. And the macro just records the action I do and then allows me to replay it, right? So the way to record it is to hit Q and then hit a keystroke. You want the macro to be recorded too. So that can be anything. So most people like to just write Q, Q. So because it's very convenient. So you'll record it to the keystroke Q. So Notice that at the bottom of the screen, it just says recording at Q. So it's recording a macro at keystroke Q, basically. And so now you just do how you edit your file. So I'll just like, I'll replace this dot with a space. I'll go to my add, then I'll delete till end, so delete dollar sign. And let's say I want to make this a uh, make this uh, capital line. So I'll just go to zero. Then I'll hit, uh, there's a, there's a keystroke for you to automatically turn something tab, which is uh, your tilde key. I mean, that's basically the slight, slight, slightly under the escape key, you have this like, little curly, curly squiggly thing. So you just hit that, you'll capitalize by automatically. And then capitalize, right? Then I'll go next. And then I'll go, go to the next line and then I'll stop the macro there. Right, so how do I call the macro? To call the macro, I'll just call add and then a the keystroke I record it at. You can see the add occurs at the bottom right of the screen. And you just hit Q. And so it just did another line for you, right? You can change this with your uh, numbers. So I'll do this 10 times for example. I'll do 10 at Q. And so I just converted all the kind of emails into kind of uh, uh, names uh, that I can kind of use if I'm editing very big files or like CSV files with a very standard format. Everyone can kind of follow. The, you can get the text files uh, on the next slide. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, so I, I, can, I can just quickly repeat it. Uh, what I just did, right? Okay, yeah. So basically I have this very standard list of emails, right? And I want to basically let's say if this is like hundred lines long, I want to record a macro to help me automate this process of getting the name out of it. So how I'll do it, I'll start recording a macro by hitting Q and then hit uh, another keystroke. It can be any keystroke. And this start, and for this time I'll use Q. So I'll just type QQ and start at the bottom of the screen you see it's recording at Q. Then I'll just do uh my actions obviously I'll start I want to go to start the line I'll hit zero then I want to find the the dot right so f dot for find the dot and then replace it with space r space then I want to find the at so find the f at, and then I want to delete to the end of the the end of the line so I'll do d dollar sign right and so let's say if I want to catch it I'll go the start of the line, I'll hit the tilde key, and then I'll go to the next one, I'll hit it again. Yeah, shift tilde, sorry. I don't know what that thing is called. Right, so I have it, then I'll, for the purpose of like repeating the macro, I'll just go down to the next line, and hit zero. So I start, so if I repeat the macro over and over again, I'll start the next line, the next line, the next line, right? And so to end the recording, I'll just hit Q again to stop the recording. And then I'll test out recording first. I'll do add Q to, to call the macro. So if you just add keystroke to call the macro, and then uh, if I want to repeat the macro, I'll do it, let's say I want to do it uh, 10 times. I'll do 10 add Q. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, awesome.
what happens if you make a mistake during a micro recording? Uh, usually, if you make a mistake, you can either just edit it and you kind of just run through the micro. It's like, let's say if I make a mistake, okay, when I'm recording, you can just stop the recording and then re record again and you overwrite. Or let's say if I, okay, let's say I made a mistake, okay, wait. Uh, I'm recording now. Let's say uh, I accidentally delete a character, too many characters. I can just like undo and then just redo my action to so R space. And then uh, what, what what happens when I redo the micro? It'll kind of go through your mistakes, but then if you undo it, you kind of undo the mistakes also. How do you jump from James to Bottle? Uh, so it is one of your navigation commands. So it's W to go to the next word here. Yep. So, yeah. So W goes to the next word. If it gets confused, if there's no spacing, it will just go to the next like, character. So let's say if I hit W here, it cannot go to the full stop. If I hit W again, go to the next one. Go to the next letter, right? Yeah. Mm. Another thing we can kind of do, right? So let me open a different file. It's really annoying. Okay, let's say I have a CSV file, right? It is a very, very big CSV file. But like uh, the first uh, three columns of the file has a corrupt data. So I don't want to use the first three, that first three, um, three columns of the file. I want to delete it immediately, right? And let's say I, because it's corrupted, I can't open it in Excel. So I might have to like, edit it manually. So how do I use Vim to speed up my uh, workflow, right? So a very good way to like, just quickly do it is to do control V for visual block. I'll go to shift G to go to the end of the file. You see it's really highlighting all the lines. And then I'll just move to where I want to delete. So it, it highlights a giant block of code or like a giant block of text I don't want it. I don't want to have, for example, like the first three uh, columns if I don't want it. And then I just hit X and it deletes it for me. So uh, it's a bit hard to do it in other editors because you know in other editors if you have you need you have this like certain way of highlighting text right you cannot highlight a certain column of text unlike Vim where you can kind of like quickly just oops highlight this entire chunk of text or like the start of the first L N characters of the line and then I can just delete it if I want it. So I can try and do that. Uh, I think the CSV for that is here. Yeah, so any questions so far? Now we'll move on. Yeah, okay, so basically there are a few other commands you can kind of do in Vim that are very, very complex. You can't, so this one I kind of covered. Basically, uh, let's say I have something I want like in brackets or like in this time, in like this file quotations I want to change. I can do change inside CI and then I type uh, the double, double quotation and then it will just delete everything inside the quotation and put me in the mode, I can just insert, right? You can use other modifiers for this. So let's say I don't have delete, I'll delete inside, so DI. I'll move, I'll you know, close it so you can see. Right, you can see at the bottom it says DI, wait, DI, and then quotation, it'll delete inside, and then I can, I'm still in normal mode. If I want to yank a certain text, let's say there's a bunch of texture, yeah? I want to yank, uh, I can do Y, I, so Y, yank inside and then double quotation. You yank everything in this quotation. And so if I move around and then I hit P to paste, you notice it will just paste everything I copied from within that quotation. Yeah, uh, there's also a find and replace. So you can go into command mode 
they kind of just uh, find a certain, let's say, on sign W, right? So basically, what this is, is you look at the bottom of the command bar there, if everyone can see it. Basically, it's just saying, uh, select, percent n is just select the entire file, uh, find station W, and then replace it with hello. And so this is your automatic find and replace. There's a lot of like uh, rejects you can use for find and replace, but we won't go through this. But you can kind of look it up. There's a lot of different rejects you can do with this. Yeah. So the cancel is a TSK. So yeah. These are just slightly more advanced features, but you already have like the base fundamentals of what you can do with them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So SW Hello G, that works too. Right. Uh extending Vim, yes. Yeah. So uh you notice this uh set of Vim is slightly different from your default Vim, right? So Vim is good in a sense and it's different from VI in a sense that it's very extensible. You can have your own uh config files. And what you do is you have this uh config file um, called uh, your dot vimrc. So if you if you uh go to your home or your CD Quigley line, you go to your home slash, and then basically you have a file here called uh, a dot vmrc, right? Where you can kind of insert a certain uh, what have you here? I see. I think mine is somewhere else. I don't think uh, mine is empty. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you can kind of insert certain configurations. Mine is in dot config. So basically, you can kind of set certain configurations might be in different file, right? So these are like some of the common configurations. So like, uh, these are like set number relative number. It's kind of it will show you your line number you see on the left. If you this line number, it will show you the relative line number from that line. So this is one line above, one line above, two lines above, three lines above, one line below, two line below. And this is good if you're like jumping from text to text. Say I want to jump to this line. I'll do 11. Like cursor line, cursor column is kind of this like crosshair thing which is going on. Right? Colors for terminal. Syntax highlighting. These are like standard um, settings you can kind of change. So uh, just to go through a couple of important ones. Like um, yeah, so uh, if I want to move between this, what I do is I just map. Uh, so how to, how to read Vim files is basically if inside these brackets, C means control, and then after that dash, J is kind of control J basically. So this is how you're mapping control J to control WJ. So if I have a split, I can kind of move around by just control K, control J, instead of control W, K, control W, J. It's a bit confusing, but there are a lot of uh, different uh, configs you can kind of look online. Here are just like vimconfig.com kind of gives you a very base config. Uh, you can go to this guy. I think this is a very popular vimrc where he has a lot of uh, features. You can try and look it, look look around. And this is my own personal one. If you want to take a look as well, right? There are different forks of vim. So aside from vi and then there's vim, there's also neo vim, which is this one here. Basically, yes, even more features than theme, kind of like asynchronous editing and stuff like that. So it's good for like stuff like uh, I believe like COC completion, which is like auto complete and stuff like that. But essentially, they are for the purposes of this demonstration, they are the same thing, right? Vim and Vim. Mm, using Vim outside of Vim, so. You notice that a lot of people kind of like the Vim bindings or key bindings or like stuff like HJKL for movement, uh, control out, control D for like up and down, stuff like that. So there are people that wrote, that write like plugins for different applications that have Vim bindings. So if you're using like IntelliJ, all IntelliJ applications kind of like have this plugin called uh, Idea Vim, which basically adds Vim bindings to your IntelliJ um, uh, IDE. 
you can use like there's this thing called Vimeo, that basically is a plugin for Chrome for you to use Vim bindings in Chrome as well. All right. So there are many, many if you search Vim bindings for an application, there probably is Vim bindings for application. All right. Uh if you ever need help, there are a lot of resources to help you learn Vim because it's very, very popular. Uh if you ever need oh, Yes, Evo Mo and Emacs works too. Yes. Uh, if you need help with a command, for example, you can do learn help. Let's say I need help with Q. And you open you open a buffer and then oh, this is a bit tough to see, but okay. Right, you open a buffer to kind of you open a, like, a help menu where you just show you a uh, Q something something. What does it do? In this case, it record a micro, right? Record characters time in a register, right? So, uh, if you want to kind of have a refresher, you haven't touched Vim before, you haven't continued touching, and just do a uh, Vim tutor on the command line. Oops, yes, but you open this file, right? And basically, I will just teach you about the basics like HJKL to move around, editing Vim, editing insertion, appending. Same thing as basically what you just went through just now. Right, and you can basically go through this quick refresher lesson in like 30 minutes. I think it's quite a short document, right? Uh, there's this uh, very cool website called Vim Golf. Basically, it's just exercises to where people kind of try and edit a certain file with the least amount of keystrokes. You can kind of look if you want to like get more practice. And there's also Vim wikis and a lot of uh, cheat sheets out there. If you ever need, just Google Vim cheat sheets and then like, there's like 20 of them you can use. So yeah, there's a lot of resources you can kind of use to learn if you ever need help. There are a lot of uh, kind of plugins you can use, but that's essentially Vim in a nutshell, right? So, yeah, so that's kind of the end of the workshop. Sorry for the technical difficulties. But yeah, so there's a feedback form up there if you want to uh, kind of help us throughout so we can improve our workshops. Uh, the upcoming Hacker Tools is basically a uh, Windows subsystem on Linux. Basically, it's this uh, like Ubuntu-ish installation you can have in Windows and how you can install it, how you can use it, right? And we will be going through uh, how to basically use the Windows subsystem on Linux. Uh, this Saturday, we're also having a Hacker School on Fluff. You don't know Flash is kind of like a backend using Python. So we'll be hosting it, uh, I believe, somewhere in COM2. You know, it'll be in Maker's Lab, so COM3, I believe, or Zoom. So you can kind of try and attend that. It's at 9 a.m. Saturday. Yeah, so if you have any questions, you'll just chill. But otherwise, that's the end of today's workshop. Do you use Vim for by default for coding projects or Zoom? Yes, I do use Vim quite often by default, right? So there are quite a lot of I think default Vim is kind of hard to use uh, alone, but with plugins, I think it's actually quite use, usable to edit code, right? So for example, I used uh like a plugin nerd tree for you to like open so you can see this. So it'll open like a tab for you where you can kind of see all your different files and all your different file structure, kind of like an IDE. And you can open files and then it's good to open splits like that right it's good to it's not just good for editing on your computer but also if you you're in like school of computing example you often need to go into like the soc servers and then you can kind of run all your stuff directly from soc servers as well using them because they have their own like unix or like two unix based operating system if you ssh into them yeah Okay, let me just stop the recording first.